Hi, I'm Will on that. I'm spotless. I'm 31 years of I'm age. I'm Jason. Hear me out. You know, um, when you were um, on the show, were, 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 the, were, the, were, were the nerves... Piece to the question, come did on. You, I mean, were you happy or were Chef, you sad? I mean, because you could get on the show. Hey, guys, Jason. come on. Let's not fight. I'm Sean. <laughs> I didn't know where I... <laughs> I don't crazy. understand what you guys are coming for. Hi, I'm Dana Carvey, and I'm on Smartless. Smart. Sean, what was your meal last night? My meal last night was I had chicken salad sandwich and mac and cheese. Mm. <laughs> Box mac you and cheese. You end up at an 11-year-old's birthday party? What happened? Did, did the, <laughs> yeah, did the camp counselor just bring that over to you, or was it set up at a... <laughs> no, but you know, Scotty and I, we actually watched the Chargers-Buffalo Bills game. And whenever Jesus the Buffalo Christ. Bills... Wait, whenever yeah, the Buffalo yeah. Bills play, yeah. um, whenever they come on the screen, one of us will always go, Buffalo Bill... I'll help you try to catch him, Caris. <laughs> oh. oh, man, that sounds it's like a fun house. What a fun you house. Guys, you guys have a lot of fun. Hello, Bell. Does the Wonder Truck, the Wonder Bread, they just come to your house, they just fuck the supermarket, they go straight to the house and just... <laughs> they slow down, they throw the back open. <laughs> they don't even stop. No, they don't even stop. It's like the ice so, cream but truck. What is it? So the chicken salad sandwich, uh, yeah. did you make the chicken salad? It was made. It was pre-made. Okay. From where? When you say it was made by what, the heavens? <laughs> no, I bought it pre-made. Oh, I see, I see. Like a tub of it. Yeah. I didn't know that CVS made chicken salad. Did you spoon it out yeah. on your Wonder Bread? <laughs> CVS chicken salad. CVS. <laughs> CVS is like a pharmacy. Yeah. Oh, thank you. you think people don't know what CVS The mac and cheese, did that, that also... Came from uh... a that came from a box. And, um, but I also had, what else did I have? I had brownies. When was the last time you put something in your face that didn't have preservatives in it? <laughs> <laughs> and let's keep it clean. Uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Oh, I had a salad. I had a little tiny Caesar salad with oh, bread crumbs in it. Oh, fucking stop the presses. I mean. <laughs> CVS has a salad <laughs> row now? CVS. Whose guest is it today? It's my guest. You know what? Let's get to our guest because our guest is way too funny to not be uh, heard from at this point. <clears throat> Our guest, I, he, we often run into this problem. We start listing off their credits, and then it's like just, it's too quick. I love you how know? Will always freestyles these intros, you know? Well, because, you know, I just try to keep it organic, man. Uh -huh. I just want to be as freestyle and organic as this person is very... You have, you have bullet points very there? Very funny. That you like to hit? I do. Okay. Um, you might remember him from his role in Halloween 2. Sure. Uh, you sure. might remember him from the film Tough Guys. Uh, is this Jack on Lantern? Uh, do you I remember Tough Guys? <laughs> Jeez, that's this bad. Tough Guys. Hello, Kirk Bill. Douglas. No. Do you remember back in the 80s? Yeah, it's a big film. This guy, Sean, in that film, he then went on to, he's not religious, but he's been known to mm -hmm. uh, maybe keep track of people going when and where they go to church. He's trying um, to underplay this. He's, yeah. He was never elected to office, but uh, you might remember as George Bush. He's got a hilarious podcast with our hilarious friend David Spade now. Oh, I love Dana Carvey. He's one of Dana the funniest Carvey. dudes of all time. I've never met him before. He's Mr. Oh, Dana Carvey. I and love I'm Dana so Carvey. honored he's here, Dana Carvey. Whoa. Whoa. Let's see Welcome. Your, he's going to reveal himself. Oh, my. There he is. Oh, there he is. What Wait, he's what anyway, are you how are you doing, in, boys? What Wait, are you doing in Bennett house? Because I demanded it. <laughs> what is good? Did you guys do a house swap today? Yeah, we did a house swap. I demanded to this be upstairs. This is the first time we've ever done this. Uh, Dana's joining us from uh, from Bennett's place, which yeah. is amazing. This is crazy. Oh, you got an incoming. I don't yeah. understand. <laughs> are, you guys, are you guys having a sleepover? <laughs> we had a slumber party last I've night. I've never seen Jason this perplexed, even, yeah. even in Ozarks. I've oh, never I have. I have. Like, just, I, Dana, I just put a book in front of him, and you'll on. see the same look. Hey, Dana. <laughs> anyway, here they what are. They're the spotless guys. They just woke up. They're a little bit sleepy. Can you believe it? Sean Hayes, Mr. Fudd, you know, you got the voice over there, Will Arnett, and of course, Jason Bateman, and the brains of the operation, I That's understand. That's right, you can tell by the glasses. I like that it's almost a Regis, that almost sounded like Reg, uh, old school Regis. It was Regis. You know, you one time, I remember you said <laughs> something about Regis, when you used to do Regis years ago, and you said, I remember this, I don't know why it's second, you said, he's so uncool, he's cool. Do you remember saying that? Totally. Like, yeah. 30 years ago, and it always stuck with me. I always thought that was such a funny comment, and true. Well, I, it's Carson at it, too. It's earnestness, Yeah, you know? 
that's that's mm-hmm. God. I Regis, my God. I remember when he was on AMLA out here in Los. This was yeah. like uh, what uh, late seventies, early eighties. Mm. I, you know, I used to think it was the thing. So he, he was the the father in law of of a good friend of ours, Mike Shore. Mike and Shore. so I went over one time. Mike and yeah. his wife JJ were in New York, so they were staying with the the Philbins, and we went over to the apartment. Philbins. And we went in. It was like for for coffee. And Regis yeah. came and he said, "Can I get you a coffee, Will?" And he was. I was like, "Wow, this is real." <laughs> <laughs> He's this old yeah. fashioned show business. He was, and yeah. it just it, he was so positive. So I do it. I get to visit him. We actually interviewed uh, William Shatner, and I signed him off as Regis, just spontaneously. And he, he laughed so hard. Who doesn't like Bill Shatner? He's done it all. He's been everywhere. But now I do creep into Trump because that's how I started Trump with Regis. Robert Smigel and I talked about that. It's really Regis. Trump and Regis have a little bit of an overlap, but then you add in this part. We're going a lot of places. We're doing a lot of things. And they go back and forth, and Regis is here, and Trump is there, but they're definitely overlapped. So it's just New York stuff, you know. Uh, it's that's hysterical. I, I want to entertain you guys. I've been listening to your podcasts. You need to be entertained. Oh, you guys please. work we hard. You it. are the person to do it. Why me? I love you. You used to do I mentioned George Bush, so uh, uh, the first George Bush in... in um, you you kind of deposited a virus into uh, the vernacular of uh, not gonna do it, which oh, yes. has become a thing that <laughs> yeah. like sometimes I'll almost like theoretically I can't stop saying it. Well, I don't know if that's what you guys have all your kind of inside jokes and catchphrases, and I love uh, Sean's. Uh, Hannibal Lecter, was it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you have to ask? Yeah, uh, terrible, but... <laughs> I did a movie with Anthony Hopkins once, and we would entertain the crew because he's like Sammy Davis Jr. He, he was an impressionist who became the world's greatest actor. Wow. And so he would do different, you know, he'd do James Cagney and I do Jimmy Stewart. And then eventually to entertain the crew, he would do Hannibal Lecter and I would do Garth. <laughs> <laughs> you know, come here, I can smell weighing on you, goth. You know, that kind of thing. Get away, big scary man. Uh, but as far as extenuating rhythms, I mean, everyone does it. At, that's what I would do in high school. You know, so George Bush Sr. on the cue card, it would say N-O-T, not going to do it. Yeah. Like four years before. Yeah. Not going to do it. By year four, it was like, not, N A, ga, G A, da, it. Not gonna, that. And they went with it. I was as shocked as you guys. I used to do, I used to do an impression of, of, uh, what it, it was not, it was you doing George W. Bush, but sure. it was, but it was, uh, it was, uh, uh Jimmy, uh, what's his name? Old, you know, not gonna do it. You know, uh, um, Jimmy, Stewart? Jimmy Stewart. Jimmy Stewart doing an impression of you doing George Bush. That's with all right. My friend Giles. I used to do it all the time. I go, not nah, gonna do it. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> and I used to call it. This is do Jimmy Stewart God. doing Dana doing things. I smuggled a, a cassette tape recorder in the mid '70s into the Circle Star Theater near San Francisco so I could tape Rich Little's act because there was wow. no YouTube. Sure. And from taping that and listening, I just took his wow. Jimmy no Stewart. <laughs> and it's somebody that you just you just you just sort of want to sneak up on. <laughs> and the thing I like about Jimmy Stewart is then I get mad. I like the angry Jimmy Stewart. Well, you know what you were doing, didn't you? Well, you know, I'm not gonna play this game anymore. And so that became <laughs> the reason I'm a comedian because I sucked so bad. But Jimmy Stewart as a waiter never failed in a biker bar. Never it failed. It occurs to me that Jimmy Stewart kind of sounds like Mason Adams, the guy who used to do smockers. When you get smockers, oh my God, that's oh, smockers. Yeah. you get so yeah. much smockers. <laughs> that's right. Are I you a secret that. impressionist? No, I'm not at all. I'm not at all, but that's just a fun voice to do. <laughs> no, but I don't but, even but, know who it is. But I'm your guest today. Hi. Hey. It's almost Owen Wilson, isn't it? You're right. You know, we it could go so- to Argentina and go surfing if you want. You know, <laughs> that'd be fun. I told Owen I would never do his impression on TV, but I'm on a podcast. You're not on TV, Sorry, right. Sean, you're next. What did you, what oh, you no, say? I was just going to say, it, for Sean. Sean. <laughs> as I say, Where's Jason Sean and Will or- actually do like really great accents. And like, I can't do as good of accents as those because those, so I bet you guys do impressions. I've just never well, heard. Well, I don't know. I do some accents good. How how are you with what's your favorite easiest accent to do? Me? 
Uh, any of you guys? Jason whips out a, a, a British one like nobody can do it, and also yeah. like, uh, and also, God, there's so many flavors of British ones. I, I do yeah, love them. You want to be like, yeah, you can go like I. I found myself talking. I'm not joking. This morning, going because I'm. I was watching Tottenham Arsenal in the North London Derby, and I was going, not today, my son, not today. <laughs> and I'm like, there's nobody here but my dog. The kids are up at their mom's house. I was like, what am I doing? We've like, been watching <laughs> Gary Oldman. We mean me and the my wife. On slow horses. Oh, yeah, And me then too. by the end of it, I'm like, you're a bunch of lazy losers and you don't know what the fuck you're doing. It's kind <laughs> of a, sh it's sort of a, it's a light version of Michael Caine. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I want to say before, if, you know, which is, if you want to do him, you go down to stairs. You start <laughs> bloody up here and then you walk it right down to stage. To oh, stage. God. Would Steve Coogan and Rob Brydon do that in the, uh, what, what was the name of the film that they do where they go oh, to all the restaurants? Guys, the Trip. The, yeah, with, The Trip. Yeah, The Trip. And they're sitting at the I table. I learned that impression. I rarely try and actively go, I got to do that guy. It was from Steve Coogan's impression. And I actually practiced it. And then I did a prank phone call to J.J. Uh, Abrams. Oh, yeah? <laughs> really? I, this is Michael Cade here. I heard you make it one of those spaceship shows, and I'd like to put my hat in the ring. I know I'm a bit long in the tooth, but maybe this old dinosaur's got one lap left around. What's that process thing. like when you, when you want to take on a, a new impression, you want to see how close you are to something that you would like? Where are you? Are you in the bathroom in front of a mirror, or mm -hmm. are you just in, a, in, a, in the car because you just need to hear it, you don't need to see it? Uh, if I'm alone at home or in a car, or many times I'll be practicing when I'm hiking. <laughs> oh, really? Sure. And I'm like, oh, Dad, now what you bloody uh, saying? Then I see a hiker and I have to go, yes, honey, I'm really, I'll be home in a minute. You know, I have to actually <laughs> cover for my voices. I like the idea that there's somebody in West LA who went for a hike and they didn't see anybody. They're like, I think I heard Michael Caine on the hike today. <laughs> or the church lane. I want to say, uh, a connect six degrees of separation. So I was on vacation. They told me to send an email to Paul McCartney in case he would go on. And I ended up interviewing Paul McCartney from the Four Seasons in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, because I was there with my family. Mm -hmm. And I listened to you guys talking to Paul, because I was looking, where is he on a podcast? So I listened to your podcast to try to get a sense of how to navigate that, because yeah. it's Paul McCartney. Yeah. And what you found was there couldn't be a nicer, more approachable fella. Yeah. Right? I mean, like, yeah, I, I, I was mean, so blown away by how kind he was. Here is like, you guys have to be Beatles fans in your age group, right? Well, Sean, sure, I'm sure. to the podcast. So I didn't think he wanted to talk about the Beatles, especially. Right. You know? Yeah. But then after a while of going around and around, I just brought up Get Back, the documentary. Right. Mm. Then he lit up. And then for all of us, the last forensic part of the Beatles is who did what? Because you know it's kind of like no reply is John Lennon's song, but did Paul write the middle eight, you know? So <laughs> at one point I took a chance. I said, did you? Did John ever thank you for your bass lines? Right. And that lit him up, you know? Yeah. Well, I was, I was the bass player. You know, normally the bass player is like the fat guy. He's the fat guy. <laughs> you know, and I was the plunk in the plunk in the plunk in the plunk. And I go, I go, you got a lot better with She's So Heavy and Dear Prudence. Well, I go, I just got up the keyboard. There's never been a more humble genius in his vernacular ever. We sat for a plunk, me and John, eyeball to eyeball. I was just plunking. We're plunking. Next thing you know, we had the White Album. <laughs> did you do? Did you do him to him at all too, or no? I did. I did a little bit, That's, but I was so intimidated. Oh you, you know, you're, you just remind me. I think that the accent that you were asking before, and not to go back, but it just thinking no, of I you love doing him to him, which was, which is, I used to always go um, Jackie Stewart, and I used to always, to get into it. I'd say it's an absolutely brutal day for motor car racing. <laughs> See, right? That's great. So <laughs> you do that need a line to it. get into it. So, right. so this past fall, these guys know I've been doing a lot of stuff with Formula One, and I'm in Singapore at the Formula One race. And I see, and this guy goes, do you want to meet Jackie Stewart? I go, yeah. And we go up and I meet him and he's walking and he looks fantastic. And I go, you know, you're using, saying, my, you know, my name is Jackie Stewart. It's a brutal day. I go, that's how I would get into doing my Scottish accent. And he goes, <laughs> oh, is that right? 
And that was yeah. it. Right. And he kept walking. <laughs> he just yeah. Gary's like, why are you stopping me? Yeah. I'm Scottish, but that one kind of, I tilt uh, away from that a lot. I can do Irish pretty good, but probably too grandiose. I got a lot of Irish relatives. But, wait, wait. What's the difference between Scottish and Irish if you were to say? Oh, my uh, God. Uh, well, going to get shut down. A tough day for racing. No, I'm just well, what would be the sound difference between Scottish and Irish? Tough day I, for well, racing. An Irish might say, well, it's a tough, a tough day for racing. Yeah. It's a little more lilty. It's a little more lilty, and a little not, not as hard on the. Paul has a lot of Irish relatives because of the the lilting Liverpool accent, which always sounds like you're asking a question. Did you go to the store? <laughs> like Canadians. I did go to the I store. Did? <laughs> well, did you go? <laughs> so many Irish moved across uh, to Liverpool, uh, Paul, yes. and, and and if you'll even Manchester, if you look at the Gallagher brothers from. From Oasis, mm -hmm. and then north of that is a town <laughs> called Blackpool, which is a oh, I, this is, is a good interesting point. Just north, yeah. It's a seaside <laughs> town, a resort town. Oh, Blackpool next to the water, huh? Great. Dublin yeah. in Irish g means Blackpool. It's the same thing. Huh? How about that? that? A lot of yeah. Irish people. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I thought you guys might want to read yeah. some. You don't need to read shit because you've got me as a friend. Thanks so. for that, Will. <laughs> I love the Irish. My wife's Irish relatives. Her mother's from Dublin. She's ninety-one, and the relatives came over. And they're so humble, as you know. There's just like, you go to a grocery store and it's like bread, egg. There's like three items. I took them to a supermarket for the first time. My yeah. wife's aunt and uncle. And they go, look at all the yogurt. It was just like, they thought it was, they go, why do you need so many cereals? I, I didn't have any response to that. It's free market capitalism. I have no idea why we need 900 times this. Wait, so Dana, so Dana, walk me through you. So you you do all this. You, you mentioned that you you go in and you, and you recorded Rich Little. What yeah. was the thing? How did you go and make? I always like to understand when people go and make the jump from being a super fan or somebody who's interested who has the talent for it or listening to it to actually getting paid for what they do. What was mm -hmm. that jump for you? Was it doing impressions or was it doing stand up or was it a combo? Uh, both. Um, I, 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 yeah, I didn't lean on the impressions. I did them, but I did a lot of other stuff too. But yeah. I, I was so, it really seemed like trying to be. Neil Armstrong, for someone from my household, yeah, five mm -hmm. kids, dad was a high school teacher, 1,500 square feet, one bathroom, that wow. I would be on television. And so that upended me a little bit. I, I did a lot of things. I was probably a waste of time. But Hollywood started hiring me just as a cute, nice guy. You know, that's yeah, what I, I mean, did. You, yeah. you had roles in movies and you were doing stuff before you They didn't SNL. care for me to be funny. Right. I was doing stand-up in the side, but they offered me one of the boys with Mickey Rooney. Yes. And so I did it. It was $7,500 a week. I was, I was like yeah, jackpot. pennies from heaven. Wait, yeah. was it Meg Ryan in that? Was it Meg Ryan in Megan that? Ryan, she, Meg Ryan was in six episodes, played my girlfriend, I believe, uh, Scatman. And, of course— Was it uh, Megan back then? It, yeah, so you caught that. Okay. Yeah. No, but was it? It was Megan. Well, wow. Megsy by the end. It, it's kind of like Anthony <laughs> Hopkins. Maggie it was Booze? it was Anthony Tony, and then it was Hoppy by I the like time we ended. You go Meg Rooney, goes Megan, and you go Mickey Rooney. He's like Michael Rooney. Yeah, sure, they were all in it. Just... Mickey's macaroni. Mickey's Mickey's everything. Mickey was the craziest <laughs> person Mickey I ever Rooney. met, and it had a, a thirty-five revolver. In his jacket. Wait, what? At the uh, 30, uh, 38. Wait, what? And he would wave it around. What? They're not going to oh get God. me. Yes. He had a loaded gun. He goes, this this script is caca. And then he would throw it across. No, he was like, you've heard stories about Mickey Rooney, haven't you? No. I mean, not really. You're outing not him right really? now. Yeah, here I'm we go. young. I'm really young. You know who he was, yeah. right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Of course. Oh, yeah. Of course. Yeah. So if he said this once, he said it a thousand times, literally every day. I was just like this. We did it on SNL, and I was writing it with Bonnie and Terry Turner, and I just said what Mickey said and that incredible laugh. So I didn't write it. I said, I was the number one star in the world. You hear me? <laughs> Bang. <laughs> the world. <laughs> and that's exactly the way he said it a thousand times. <laughs> number one star in the world. Bang. You hear me? The world. What, what is that sound supposed yeah, to be? What's he doing? I don't know. But he was uh, He was just, um, he had Nuts. a gun, scat man with stone. He thought I was gay. Sure. And I was there with Nathan Lane. So we had to do a, a threes company thing. Oh, well, there you go. Where what he had his cast. arm around Nathan. He looked at me and said, I'm just glad we like girls. Uh, <laughs> what? Oh, so he's... Wait. 
Wait, what a fucking cast. <laughs> so it was you, Nathan Lane, Meg Ryan, and Mickey Rooney? And Scatman Carruthers. And Scatman Carruthers. Who just was stoned, what? the nicest guy I've ever met. But he was just high all day. And my brother came <laughs> to visit me, and he gave us some pot, and it was terrible. So the next trip, I, I brought him a lid of Santa Cruz Colombian pot. Sure. Can you believe it? This is like 1981. Classic blend. Next morning in the elevator, he says... The music was good. Might I get a pound? <laughs> <laughs> so and after the show was... <laughs> yeah. Just we want to, didn't want to mess, mess around with an ounce. No, it was know. called music. It was a little bit of sure. And Straight he had a to bottle, a, pound. a clear <laughs> bottle full of vitamins, and he would walk back and forth across the sound, the sound stage chugging them going, I'm going to 100. I'm going to 100. And he would chug the vitamins. But after the show, my brother and I got him a whole bag. We didn't smoke much weed after this. But anyway, a mm. bag of Santa Cruz pot, giant, and brought it to Van Nuys, brought it to his house, and he played the ukulele for us for hours. Uh -huh. <laughs> no way. So way. What's, this, what's this project called? I got to see this. One of the boys. One you of the boys. Look it up online. One of the boys. Uh, the craziest. I wore a sweater. I was the straight man. Literally. Uh, Mickey... We would do impressions together, too. He was an impressionist. But he did have a 38 revolver, and he said, before I got this big break, I was going to go to Sacramento to the prison there. There's a serial killer, Juan Corona. I was going to come in as a visitor. I was going to bring my 38, and I was going to say, you know who I am? I'm Mickey Rooney, and I was going to plug him full of holes. <laughs> <laughs> I, these are verbatim quotes. That's John Mulaney's favorite thing I've ever told him. <laughs> these are verbatim quotes from Mickey Rooney. And he's Man. one of those old guys who would talk till he ran out of breath. Yeah. Incidentally, Judy Garland never, and everything was a non sequitur. Judy Garland never owned a car. They pumped her so full of drugs they killed her. How long has Robert Redford been in the business? <laughs> Ten years? I've been in the business. It's like three weeks before his birth. I've been in the business 61 years. He's the greatest character I've ever met. <laughs> By far. Really, really holding on to his past. Yeah. Oh, uh, oh, yeah. He was like, I called up Warner Brothers in 1955. I said, this is Mickey Rooney. I need a job. They hung up on me. And then he would wander <laughs> off. <laughs> and he had a new show, a new thing every day. Right, that is so yeah. And we will be right back. Smartless is sponsored by BetterHelp. You know, to be my best self, I just feel like if I, if I can talk to somebody, open up to somebody, let them know what's going on inside of me, they might give you feedback, they might not, but at least you're talking it all through and, and that's one of the things that BetterHelp can really help with. When you're at your best, you can do great things, but sometimes life gets you bogged down and you may feel overwhelmed or like you're not showing up in the way that you want to. Working with a therapist can help you get closer to the best version of you because when you feel empowered, you're more prepared to take on everything life throws at you. Um, I mean, I, I know that I've definitely benefited from therapy, from just sometimes it's a therapist, sometimes it's a best friend, sometimes it's a partner, sometimes it's, look, you need that that person to bounce stuff on. If, if you're thinking about giving therapy a try, BetterHelp is a great option. Just give it a shot. It's convenient, it's flexible, it's affordable, and it's entirely online. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime if that is no longer a good match for you for no additional charge. If you want to live a more empowered life, therapy can get you there. Visit betterhelp.com slash smartless today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash smartless. So betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash smartless. Smartless is brought to you in part by Viore Clothing, a new perspective on performance apparel. What do I say? It just that I haven't said already about this incredible product that it's uh, it's really versatile. Uh, it can be used for just about any activity. I think I've covered that before. You can running or training or swimming or yoga, but also great for lounging and or just running uh, uh, weekend errands. I I feel like a bit of a broken record about how great this stuff is, and I'm a fan 
because of this stuff I wear. I, I have these Viore stretchy sort of, uh, uh, you know, weekendy lounge pants that I adore. And when I couldn't find them the other day, I flipped out. I was flipping out. I was going through drawers. I was like, where are those? I need to have the blah, blah, blah. That's how much I enjoy it. You know what's a really good marker of something that's that's great is that you put it on and you feel simultaneously like it's new and also that you've always had it in the best way because it feels comfortable. Viore is an investment in your happiness. So for our listener, they're offering 20% off your first purchase. Get yourself some of the most comfortable and versatile clothing on the planet at viore.com slash smartless. That's V-U-O-R-I dot com slash smartless. Not only will you receive 20% off your first purchase, but enjoy free shipping on any U.S. orders over $75 and free returns. Go to viore.com slash smartless and discover the versatility of Viore clothing. Thanks to ZipRecruiter for their support. Are you hiring? What type of role are you hiring for? Maybe you need to hire somebody to wear many hats, which can be challenging. Or you might have a simple position to fill, but it's taking forever to find someone who's a great fit for your company. So whether you need to hire a civil engineer in New York or a pediatric nurse in Nebraska or an attorney in Colorado or even a mascot in Missouri, ZipRecruiter can help you find quality candidates fast. And now you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash smartless. From accountant to zoologist and everything in between, ZipRecruiter's matching technology finds people with the right experience for your job and presents them to you. Then you can invite your top choices to apply. What? It's so effective that four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. A, 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 A. Is that sinking in? Try it now for free at this exclusive web address, ZipRecruiter.com slash smartless. Once again, that is ZipRecruiter.com slash S-M-A-R-T-L-E-S-S. ZipRecruiter.com slash smartless. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. And now, back to the show. Wait, Dana. <laughs> yes. When I was in high school, you know, Mike Myers was on on our show, and I th- I said the same thing to him, and he I said when I was in high school, you know, you were you were God to me, and God to everybody who was into <laughs> comedy and sketch Thank and you. just everything. Like, and and we would go. I remember going to school on a Monday, and everybody yeah. in high school would imitate. Yeah. The church lady and yeah. and um, mm-hmm. every single character you guys ever did in Wayne's World, whatever whatever the characters were, and do you? I, I always wondered after your incredible stint on SNL, like I missed you. I missed like, like seeing those. What happened those. to me? No, no, no. I mean, I've seen you. I, I saw you pop you. up in a bunch of stuff. Yeah. But just as far as being a king of sketch comedy, it's almost like. And I know you had a couple uh, uh, other like spinoff kind of sketch comedy shows. But do you miss it at all still today? Because oh, yeah. there's you're really yeah. one of the all time greats. Thank you. Um, yeah, without a oh, doubt. I mean, the, the, you know, I was. You got me to vote for Ross Perot. <laughs> <laughs> the first vote I ever cast. Uh, Ross Perot is a gift from heaven. That was my Sarah Palin for Tina Fey. <laughs> yeah. Or yeah. Michael said, there's yeah. someone running to Texas billionaire. He's running for president. We have some tape. Why don't you go down the hall and, you know, like see if there's anything there, you know? <laughs> I turn it on. The ears are sticking out. Can I finish? James Brown is already there. Can I finish one time? Or are you going to talk over me? Can I finish one time? Here's the deal. You can't put a porcupine in a barn, light it on fire, and expect to make licorice. What? That was the gift. George Bush was work. That and then was Phil a... Hartman did Stockdale, right? <laughs> oh yeah, when right? he tried to ditch him in the woods, you know. Oh my God. We were dr- Stockdale was, uh, was. I was driving as Ross, and I wanted to ditch him after his debate performance. Where are we going? Who am I? <laughs> Phil could do anything. God rest his soul. I remember Phil used to do in that same election cycle, '92. Phil was doing uh, Clinton, yeah, and and he would do the thing, and he'd come in, and he comes into a McDonald's on a jog, and he starts making analogies and stealing people's food to make his analogy. Like if I take a bite of this, and he's, and the whole thing was he just wanted to eat everybody's McDonald's. Yes, Phil could do anything. I mean, I, I swear it. to God. I mean, you guys, I echo what Sean says. You guys were up there for me too. I looked at you guys were on such at such heights that I thought. 
I could never get anywhere near that. You guys are so incredible at what you do. I still look up to what you guys do because sure. well, you guys yeah. did it in this way. This is way before YouTube and you could have control over it and do all this kind of shit. Like you guys were doing it live on SNL in a way and, and stuff that nobody else was doing. There's so much derivative shit that mm -hmm. came out of that kind of era. Uh, sure. Well, what it might be. Did. I mean, you guys have had all these weird things happen. Like I had auditioned for the show twice. Um, just didn't get it. Al Franken saw me in San Francisco. I followed Kennison at the uh, comedy store at midnight, Sam Kennison. Mm -hmm. I bombed. Mm -hmm. I was shocked I got on it. You know, Jim Carrey was auditioning. I'm, you know, I'm going, okay, I'm not on this show. Got on it. Then I was told we only had an eight show pickup for the first time in the history of Saturday Night Live. It wasn't a full 20. Wow. Hit the ground running or we're out of here. Right. And then the church lay was just a fluke. It's something I did in my stand up. Oh, we'll try it. So the so week funny. I did the church lay, the first week I, and I'd never done sketch comedy. I'd only done stand up. Wow. So Incredible. crazy. So Neil Young calls. Sure. I do. Yeah. Of course he does. Yeah. And I got to go down Oh, he leaves to, long messages, doesn't he, Dan? <laughs> oh, man. Look at one of my first impressions. <laughs> I actually, I was at a Neil Young concert once. I go, Dana Carvey concert. backstage. Dana Carvey, come backstage concert. And so I went back and Neil was in his, his uh, bus making pasta. Yeah, this is going to kick in a little while. Could you do a little bit of time? So I had this old bit, hacky bit I used to do of Neil Young seeing, doing a commercial for McDonald's. I'm not proud of it. <laughs> well, I dreamed I saw the golden arches <laughs> in the yellow haze of the sun. I do the whole thing. Ten years later, my kids are in junior high, and a dad comes up to me and goes, hey, man, I got this Neil Young bootleg album. You're the first track. <laughs> no way. Anyway, way, but anyway, wow. so Church Lady, I put it in the read-through. It did so-so. Neil Young had called the next day, so I had to go down to Madison Square Garden. He was doing a garage band motif. He told Lauren, I need some kind of angry woman. So I went down there and did it that <laughs> night on Wednesday when they picked the show. I came back and found out that Church Lady just barely got on, that my buddy Phil Hartman said, I think we should give it a chance. So it was the last sketch in the first show, thinking this isn't going to fly. Yeah, yeah. And I'd never done it with the dress. So the minute I said, Victoria Jackson was going off, and Jesus, this and that, and then I just said, well, isn't that special? <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Mic drop. Then all the nerves went away, you know, so and that, that's and how that, And that last slot on SNL, as you know, and you guys know because you, you've hosted. The death uh, spot. That's where they kind of either bury stuff or try stuff that's kind of Yeah, new. or they don't think it has a chance. Right, yeah. Kind of. But that's, but it's. You mean it the last be, sketch of the, the yeah. last sketch last of the sketch night, of the but night. it's kind of freeing, oh. right, Dana? You must have felt kind of like, fuck it. I was so nervous before I went out there because I, I was, I, I literally played a pizza parlor in Martinez, California in July. <laughs> right. <laughs> I played to four people. Half the audience hated me. These are the jokes. <laughs> then, this is October 10th. I go out to Lauren's house. I hang out with Paul McCartney and Chevy Chase. Mm -hmm. I go mm -hmm. to Yankees games with Lauren. I live there for like a month. I go on the show. I'm shy. I'm terrified. I was swearing at myself in the mirror before the sh show, you know. You yeah. motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> Just to get rid of the... So then Church Lady moves up first. I'm in the... I didn't know I was in the cold opening. with. So I'm in that. I'm doing a alien wow. sketch, and then I do Chop and Broccoli at the end. Oh I mean, God. one of my all-time favorites, Chop and Broccoli. Why that... Stuck so hard, I don't know, Sean. It's Me so too. funny. It's I don't so know bizarre. That one. How do I not know it's, that one? It's chopping not, broccoli, it, broccoli. I didn't like a do British it that guy much. chopping broccoli. It's the song's called Chopping Broccoli, and he sits at the piano and it's just chords like a like a ballad, like a rock ballad. It's like and a, it's chopping broccoli. It, it, Fuck, it, it, Dana, it, I used to do George Bush doing chopping broccoli too. <laughs> well, can I hear that? <laughs> you know, chopping broccoli. That you know, <laughs> it's so bad. I but the I mean, premise I mean, of it. Jason was that yeah. he had, which Lauren liked a guy who had to play his new songs for the record company executives. It was yeah. Sigourney Weaver and Phil Hartman, <laughs> and it was so like, well, fun. I don't know if I've got anything. Um, I'll try it, and he says he's cold as ice, which is like a foreigner thing. Uh -huh. And then he's riffing Paradise. He's making it up, and then finally, 
And she's uh, she's chopping broccoli, and that became just it's chopping broccoli. She chop. So that was just that. <laughs> like what, like Jay, whatever the idea was, it would uh-huh. always come back to he's just chopping broccoli. He's sure. just chopping broccoli. <laughs> now I do ten minute renditions when I do stand up. Oh, you do. Riff. Oh yeah, I do it with a guitar. I do all. I would love to see. But that was the most nervous I'd ever been. Was the first the first the 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 impress because I. Don't when you audition for Saturday Night Live, don't you have to have um, a couple of impressions? Um, and if mm-hmm. so, do you do you still do the ones that you did originally for your first audition? Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I mean, I probably did Jimmy Stewart. I think yeah. I did Chop Broccoli a little bit. Yeah. See, well, what happened was I auditioned in different. I didn't want to audition at the Comedy Store or the Improv because mm-hmm. I always bombed in those yeah. two places. So Lauren Michaels comes around with the show. They need four new cast members. So. I was playing a little club on the west side called Igby's, which is a 100-seater, low ceiling, hot club, and I played there a lot. Rosie O'Donnell was headlining the week that Lorne Michaels was in town. I didn't know her, but I knew the owner, and I said, ask Rosie if she'll give me a spot on her set, and I'm going to bring Lorne Michaels. So Rosie said yes. So then I there that night, Lorne Michaels is going to oh, see God. me do stand-up. Wow. And I met Rosie and she seemed she seemed like an old soul. She never seemed she just was like kind of had that rosy confidence, yeah. you know? Yeah. So I said, maybe I should go on first. So, <laughs> you know, I call him first. So I'm standing in the wings. Lord Michaels come to see me. I've been at this 10 years. I failed at everything I'd done had been canceled or bombed. <laughs> and then Lord Michaels walks in. Holy shit. After him, Brandon Tartikoff, the head of NBC wow, at the God. time. Then I'm like, oh God, he brought the head of the network. Then Cher. Oh, <laughs> of course. Yeah. Oh they God. came in. Wow. And so, but I was nervous, but I had 40 minutes instead of five. And wow. I think that's what helped. 40? Go- yeah, because Rosie cleared the decks. You know, I just did the night with her. And then she got a sitcom out of it. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah. That's incredible. Wow. So, just to jump back and forth a little bit, Dana. So you you leave SNL, you go and you do a sitcom, as we mentioned. Or no, sorry, no. not sitcom, not sitcom, comedy show. Uh, um, I did the the Dana Carvey the Dana show Carvey in nineteen ninety six. Yeah, with <laughs> with now, Steve Carell, yeah, Stephen Colbert, yes. Louis C.K., yeah. Dino Stephanopoulos, you Robert Carlock, Robert Carlock, unbelievable, uh, John Glazer. Yeah. John my Glazer. Good, my yeah. good friend, John Glazer. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, we had Louis C.K. was my head writer. I gave him Louis C.K. was your head writer. Steve Carell was a writer, uh, as we mentioned. Performer. Uh, yeah. Performer. Um, and Carell. Uh, Carell. Um, I mean. I call him the two Steves. Smigel. Of course, Smigel. Smigel, yeah, was my co Was my your partner, co-creator, yeah. right? Yeah. So, I mean, this is a this is an unbelievable all star team. Yeah, uh, and just of of course, because uh, showbiz is uh, bats a thousand, they cancel it. This yeah. show, <laughs> this show. Well, there's a story yeah. behind that. First of all, well, let's hear it. I had two weeks to think about it because I miss sketch comedy, and Smigel and I had a great connection on there. Where, you know, we did Carson and a lot of different uh, the McLaughlin group things together. So, <laughs> oh God, I love that uh, issue one. Jason, 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 the Argonauts. <laughs> Sean Connery. <laughs> no, that was just rhythmically riding up things. Smile, we, we just connected rhythmically. So I decided I want to do it on HBO. I go, you could do 10. You could still have a life, you know. So then I think Bob Iger was in the room. I don't want to blame him. I like Bob. But they go, come on. Do it at ABC. My manager wanted to do it at ABC. We could do it at ABC. It would be great. You know, the great Brad Gray. <laughs> so then, and and then Louis and Robert at that point kind of wanted the, the budget and the money of ABC. And the idea was, oh, you have a Disney face. You're kind of like Carol Burnett. You can work in prime time. <laughs> okay, terrific. Let's do it. And then they gave me an extra million. You know, okay. People like sure, numbers. That'll, that'll do it. Sure. I never cared about the money that much, but like you guys. But my point is, <laughs> no. <laughs> no, but sure. the first show, we were banking shows in New York. We moved to New York because my wife and I didn't want to raise our kids in the Valley, which probably mm-hmm. would have been fine. Yeah. So then we bank a sketch that Louis wrote, which was Bill Clinton. I didn't have a good Bill Clinton, but it's like, 
He's giving his speech to the nation, and we can do better and all that. And then he opens his shirt, and he's got teats like a dog, and he's going to breastfeed puppies. So actual live puppies, and I will feed the, the nation. And do so I got the chart of the, the, we were at 16 million when Bill appeared, and it goes like a ball. We were like at 2 million, just hanging in. Viewers, you mean. Yeah. Once you yeah, expose the row of teats. Yeah, the teats, and then we were just the critics lambasted us, and so we made it through eight shows, and then it became a cult classic. So, yeah. had you been on uh, on on uh, something that wasn't a, a mass audience broadcast platform, perhaps it would have uh, been a little bit more embraced. Did you find that you were oh, yeah. more of a populist audience than? Yeah, than there was, was no Netflix. There was no yeah. anything. Yeah. There was just maybe I, I guess Comedy Central or HBO. You know, yeah. yeah, I remember yeah. that coming out. I remember the Dana Carvey show, and 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 I was like in my head, I was like, oh, finally somebody gave the guy a shot. Like it's it just seemed like natural that you would. It have It hasn't that worked, shot. you know. Martin Short tried. I mean, people have tried in prime it's time. Tough. It's you know. tough, isn't it? Yeah, it's got to be the right platform. Didn't Marty do it? Didn't Marty do it with? Uh, well, he did one recently with Maya. With Maya, with Maya. yeah, he did yeah. one with Maya, yeah. yeah. So, but it, it, there was some brilliant stuff in that. Some great stuff. You met with the A team of writers we had. And so Josh oh Greenbaum God. did a documentary that came out a couple of years ago. Yeah, I got to I heard about oh, that. Really? Yeah, too funny to fail. Yeah. Isn't there so much content? I'm just going to go on a limb and say it. There's just we've reached peak content. <laughs> <laughs> I always say people talk about content creators. This is a kind of I don't know if I brought it up. It kind of makes me mad cuz I feel like content is what I put between the walls of my house to insulate you know, from the cold or the heat. That's that's content. Right. If you yes. call what you do content, just <laughs> you're just making filler. Yeah. Like, okay, thanks. I don't, <laughs> hey, man, I don't make content. Something yeah. to stuff the pipe with. Right. Well, we've but I'm also, also not making art. It should be noted. <laughs> no, yeah. It's well, also the audience either. is the entertainer no. now. It was like you'd have Frank Sinatra on stage or whatever, and the audience would be out there. Now, now the audience is entertainers as well with social media and Instagram. Yeah, everybody's We're famous. all posting. We're all entertaining now. Warhol said we'd all be famous for 15 minutes. Right. Yeah. yeah. Now it's like, we'll all be stars. <laughs> well, speaking of which, I mean, your longevity and uh, relevance has been so sustained for so long. Uh, do you, I mean, you can't, you can't attribute all that to, to luck and talent, right? I mean, is, is there, is there a third magic component that, that, that you're working with? Cause, um, mm. you know, I, mm. I'm with, I'm with Sean. I prefer a weekly dose of you, but, um, you are, you are around and fantastic uh, still. And mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it, what's your secret? I don't yeah. know. I'm a little bit like you, Jason. I think from what I've heard is I, I really kind of am, am a homebody a little bit. Yeah. You know, I've got my keyboards and my guitar, my lovely wife and all mm -hmm. the cool shows I could watch. Right. So, um, you know, I never, I just do the... Um, I mean, what what do you guys say to yourself? It's cognitive behavioral therapy, right? No one's thinking of you. Never feel sorry for yourself. When I had those few things bomb and the bomb, the botch bypass, that's a whole yeah. other story in the yeah, 90s. Yeah, in your heart, yeah. I that, that thing. So then I had to come out on Letterman and wait, I was wait, feeling I really that. small. Like you had, really, it's, you had like an operation on the wrong, I remember you talking about this, on the wrong yeah. artery or something, right? Well, yeah, as, as quick as I can. Yeah, I had familial hypocholesteremia. I didn't know it. My cholesterol was 400. My LDL was 300. Oh, my God. Wow. And I didn't know it. So at 42, I started having symptoms. They found out I had a blocked LAD, but I never had a heart attack. Big distinction because I was so fit at the time. Yeah. And so then I had someone throw in some stents and I didn't know that sometimes your body doesn't know how to react to a little metal sheath in the artery, surprise. Yeah. So yeah. it'll it'll scar tissue up, therefore blocking you again. So I had like six of those, they had to keep rotor rootering oh and putting God. new stents in. It was Fuck. all in this one area of the LAD. Usually people get squeamish and leave the room at this point. No. Uh, I'm used to it. first diagonal. This is a crossover episode of Hypochondriactor, right? This yeah. Is, yeah. <laughs> Welcome. Well, I, I love, I love medical stuff. Uh, we'll do a public service after this where I say this thing This thing is arrested now, in, in essence, if you follow the protocol. Heart mm -hmm. disease, you should never be surprised when you're having a heart attack. Right. There's so many right. things they do now. But anyway, so then they said, well, we'll do a simple bypass. You keep restenosing. These were these old-fashioned stents. So they swung over my mammary arteries, which never block up. Right. But the surgeon I picked in Northern California was considered the greatest in the world. I had a private jet in the air to take me to Cedar sinai 
but I was convinced by well-meaning people to go with this surgeon. Mm -hmm. He ended up, instead of attaching a hose to a big trunk of a tree, he attached it to a healthy diagonal off the other side. So the, aye, the aye, blockage aye. was still there. So when they found it, I was like, holy shit, because by that point it had so many angioplasties, I was kind of awake. So they mm. rotor rooted it, and he goes, you want me to push it a little harder? And I go, yeah, let's go for it. So now it's never blocked up again. And no one knows why except my Hindu cardiologist, P.K. Shaw, director oh, of cardiology yeah. at Cedar sinai yeah. said a prayer for me at Mother Teresa's tomb. <laughs> and my 91-year-old mother-in-law, she's probably 60 then, said a prayer for me at a wishing well outside of Dublin. I'm just putting it out there. Sure. <laughs> and so that, that happened. And then I went on the protocol. My cholesterol now, my LDL, which is the real dangerous one, yeah. is 45. And Amazing. it was 300. Amazing. So here well, I am. Got, I so feel no, perfect. No, no changes to your diet at all? Or a, you oh, a, a complete or? shift on the diet. Yeah. I know you guys teach Sean about his diet. I was like that in my 30s. You know, I'd have a big giant turkey sandwich with mayonnaise yeah. right. or macaroni and cheese. I was eating kind of like a kid from the 60s or 70s. So anyway, I did change the diet and I just paid more attention to everything and, and stress. Are you vegan now or anything like that? No, um, Mediterranean diet has the uh -huh. best results. So I do a lot of sin. What part of the Mediterranean? Mediterranean diet. I love the Mediterranean. Like are you the talking about Papua New Guinea? Like the, uh, the Greek islands? Maybe? A little like salmon, you know. <laughs> now, so, anyway, Croatia what about, what about, is the place have, to go. Sorry. Do you have to watch uh, your, your heart rate? Like, can you exercise vigorously and all that stuff? Yeah, because I never had uh, any heart damage or a heart attack, mm -hmm. which is usually people kind of glaze over at this point as well. Um, like I don't, I really, really have a high V2 max for my age. I mean, I, I hike up mountains and yeah. yeah, I don't have any, any, any governor on that. Oh, so you're like mm -hmm. bionic now. How yeah. great. We'd love to go for a hike for you guys because you go, damn, you weren't lying. You well, know I what I want, that. you know what I saw yesterday, uh, Kevin Nealon's got a hiking show. He yeah. does a little, a little, yeah. a little for chat. A, and for a while. I was on that. For a while. Yeah. yeah. Pay attention. Yeah. I was on that show with them, yeah, yeah, and I just kept accelerating just a little bit on the hill, just more and more until it's like, <laughs> so let me let me understand this. Yeah, Kevin was another one of my partners in crime on SNL. What a funny oh, thing. What a with Hans and Franz. Hans and Franz. You guys were hilarious. I love that maybe more than anything else as far as what makes me laugh. Two, two wounded idiots who are yeah. paranoid and delusional and keep yeah. challenging an invisible audience. Yeah. yeah, and if you think we're not properly pumped, I could take your flab and stretch it into the shape of a rope ladder so you could crawl down back in the sewer because that's where Lewis live. Lewis live. It's just that, that because so I became very fey with that character and right. Langorius, which right. made it more fun for me. <laughs> it's really God, funny. It's so great. And now, a word from our sponsor. This episode is brought to you in part by Visible. You usually pay more for one line of wireless than if you're on a shared plan, right? Why is that? Because your phone is your phone. Wouldn't it be great if you could get the same deal on your own line? Meet Visible. Visible offers their best rate all on one line. Not four lines, not three, not even two. Just a one-line wireless plan with unlimited data for $30 a month, taxes and fees included, all powered by Verizon. Visible is flexible and can save you money without a family plan. Switch today at Visible.com and get $20 off your first month when you use code SMARTLESS20. That's SMARTLESS20, a special offer for SMARTLESS listener. Offer ends March 31st. New activation and offer code required. For data management practices, learn more at Visible.com. Additional terms apply. Smartless is brought to you in part by Macy's. Valentine's Day is around the corner. And guess what? Outside of doing the kind of chocolates or the flowers or whatever, which are, I just got to say, pretty lame, it's tough to know what to get that special someone for Valentine's Day. You don't know what to do. You're like, I don't want it to be too much or I don't want it to be too little. I don't want it to be this. I don't want it. And you get kind of... I know I do, I get paralyzed because I don't know what to do. So if you're stumped on what to get your special someone, Macy's has you covered with their gift finder. They've got amazing gifts at any price from Lux to $25 and under. Check out these great ideas at macy's.com slash 
gift finder. So Macy's has the best PJs for cozy nights in. They do have the flowers if you want to just get that for the day night or the candy and the chocolates, you know, and they have a lot of the most sought after gifts at Macy's. They got like, the, you know, the incredible brands, Kate Spade and Coach and Ralph Lauren and Swarovski and more. And you can treat yourself for yourself you do you deserve a beautiful fragrance you know there's some self-care beauty uh, stuff or just some beautiful jewelry you know why not this is what macy's is gonna do i'm gonna do the gift finder for myself elf elf again that's macy's.com slash gift finder to find the best gifts this valentine's day all right back to the show now, you know, um, I want to talk about, ask about you being a dad because um, I'm always blown. Like, I have a bunch of, your friends are your friends because they make you laugh, right? Jason and Will make me laugh so hard. Another friend of mine, Mike Carey, makes me laugh. Oh, you guys have a great Carey. thing going on. Oh, thanks. <laughs> but, uh, you know, and I'm always kind of amazed, like, being around Jason in front of his kids or Will in front of his kids. Sometimes their kids will laugh at something they say, and most of the time they'll kind of, like, roll their yeah. eyes. And oh, yeah. from the outside, I'm like, no, wait, your dad is fucking hysterical. Like, I can't imagine being one of your kids. Like, I'm always blown away when kids don't find their famous funny parents They're just so funny. tired of the material. Just I'm like, just, you know, know I, but... aren't you guys, you're most of the time just regular, right? Most of the time. Yeah. And then if you get around someone who makes you laugh, like me, David Spade, it's hysterical. Ugh, yeah, then that so ping funny. pong effect starts to happen. Right, but you know, I'm mostly just just regular, and they try to make me laugh. You know. Oh, really? So, yeah. I love yeah, watching my kids' sense of humor develop. Oh yeah. You know, like it's really interesting to see to see a, a human being discover sarcasm and irony. You know, mm -hmm. like it's just just you know, obviously it's after they learn the language, and then. Then they learn like how to like twist and bend stuff and not Wait, break it. And like I mean, it's just like Maple's got it down. Hysterical. His daughter Maple. Yeah. Um, I'm in love with both of, of his daughters. But Maple said to me the other day when we were out together, um, all of us, I we were saying goodbye, and she she didn't even get up off the couch to say goodbye. She turns to me and she goes, I love you, sweetheart. You have a great evening. <laughs> I mean, and she's like, you know, <laughs> Eleven, and it was so sarcastic because yeah. we were all saying "I love you goodbye." <laughs> they make they make such leaps all of a sudden, and I I hope you guys wrote them down. I wish I had, but one night I was putting my son to bed, and he's like four, and I said, "Tom, do you know that I love you?" And he goes, "It's pretty obvious." <laughs> <laughs> he's four. Uh, how did yeah. how did you start doing the podcast with Spade? I love the combo of you and Spade. Yeah, uh, yeah, because you're both. Fucking naturally well, Spade is hilarious, dude. Seeing him up close, and it's so lo-fi, but he'll he'll create a, a little mini movie <laughs> in like 30 seconds. So it's yeah. like, hey, I saw that as a boozy Susie. Whoop, and he's like, I'm like, mm -hmm, you, know, <laughs> you know, hey, I don't, you know, and I don't know what I was doing. I got, yeah, it wasn't he? It's just so fun to watch <laughs> and riff around with him. And I met him before SNL, just at this house in Beechwood Canyon. So I met him when he was like 21. What's up, dude? Hey, buddy. And everyone always <laughs> immediately likes David. Mm -hmm. And I did. And then I interacted with, he came to SNL. We were there as bandmates for three, four years. And then, you know, I was up north raising my kids. We, but every time we see each other, it's like you guys, we one second. So yeah. when I moved back down here, um, and I live at a place that's a uh, walkable to Koi. <laughs> I started having dinner with David a lot. And yeah. that's where we would go. And one time we went to some other restaurant. I said, Let's just go over there. Because I like to have a conversation. I don't like to. It's like when I met you, Jason. Yeah. It's like, oh, Jason Bateman. This is cool. Uh -huh. And then we were at the <laughs> Laker game. And we're up in the Ted Sarandos box. And yeah. it's literally, okay, what? Well, how are you? Yeah, I'm know. fine. How, what, what are you doing? You know, so Koi is like, you can talk. Yeah. But I David that. and I did that. I did a little off the radar uh, podcast. This is a try it out called Fantastic. It's online where I had a, a female sidekick and I had relatives on it, like my sister and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then I would riff and do long form. Like Obama was a running part of the podcast. Mm -hmm. Dana, can I come on today? Uh, no, my sister's coming on. <laughs> Michelle, I'm not coming on. Says the sister's coming on. No, leave the egg salad out. So I could just <laughs> riff stuff like that, long form. And yeah. then I had David on as a guest. Our manager heard it, our mutual manager, Mark Gervitz. 
and said, you guys got to do a podcast. You got to do a podcast. You know, that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. So then we decided to try it. Ah, we'll try it. And I'm still not used to this idea. I mean, it was kind of fun. And I consciously, because I listened yeah. to your podcast and I was listening to, I thought it'd be fun to try to do voices and entertain you guys <laughs> a little bit today. <laughs> you have. You have. But I, I, in spades. this idea of me is like, either I kill or I'm fired, you know, or I'm dismissed for most mm -hmm. of my career. Like, I've got to destroy it stand-up, and I've got to kill. It's a lot of pressure. And now being authentic and real, funny if it comes up, yeah. and just be yourself. Like, yeah. I take the headphone, I go, so that was good? <laughs> it's like, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. This brand-new art form. I mean, yeah. everyone would have had these. All those sketch oh. actors that, uh, you know, Shecky Green would have had a podcast, right. or Sid Caesar. Or, yeah, yeah. So it's an incredible new art form. That's well, but you've just got such me. a way about you where, I mean, you're so easy to be with and enjoy being around, uh, whether Thank it's you. in person <laughs> or uh, watching you on TV or just hearing your voice. I mean, don't discount that. I know it doesn't feel like you're doing anything, but you're, 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 you're so naturally appealing. Well, yeah. This goes you know? back to like what Jason was saying, what's the missing ingredient? I th really think you're so naturally funny. You have no choice in the matter. I th there are certain people who have no choice. Yeah. You and Farrell and Spade and whomever. The, the list is long, but but who you have no choice in it, and that's the reason that you have the longevity. I think Jason, to answer yeah. your question, is just you're in it. Good a, dude, a good dude, but naturally funny, naturally talented, and I think the podcast reveals that to a wider audience of like. Yeah. You know, you can, you don't, you can just kind of do it and you can do it in conversation and it's not easy to do. It's a lot harder than people think. And there are a lot of people who are funny or present funny or present really good, but that's somebody else doing a lot of work for them. And then they present to actually mm -hmm. be that yourself. Uh, it's been very consistently. interesting. I'm, I'm sure it is for you three, this, this, this art of conversation, what Johnny Carson could do or anybody yeah. we admired interviewing in this sort of lo-fi form where it's mm -hmm. a conversation as opposed to a straight interview yeah we're bad and wanting it to have energy yeah. needing yeah. to overlap like you would at dinner spade yeah. and i tease you i said i was practicing overlapping you during christmas break <laughs> my wife would talk and then i would interrupt her just to stay in shape but i listened to the podcast would you, would you have the, your wife ask really long questions just to, so you could get it just, get just ready so for it. jason yeah yeah because yeah. yeah. sometimes you don't know if you're giving your partner an assist that they right. literally have started an opus yeah. and then you can tell the steam is out of the, it's, it's, I'm not sure they know, are going to land this. Yeah. So you can yeah. interrupt them I'd like to give you not. half the answer I'd like to hear from you. And uh, yes. yeah. then turn you loose. <laughs> All right. Wait, Dana, do you have, are you, are you, other than this, the great podcast with you and Dana? And you got another Spade, podcast. Yeah. Um, another, yeah. It, like an album, basically. It's called The Weird Place. <laughs> I did it with my sons. Really? Oh, that's great. They're very sensitive about the whole Nepo movement. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm, they're whatever. thinking of changing their last name, Nepotism. Yeah, it's so. Yeah. I mean, it's, so so it's a new, it's since, a new concept. You know. I yeah. mean, what the fuck are we yeah. talking about? Hey, I'm a plumber. Joey, my son's a plumber. He plums too. <laughs> Capiche, right. what, rub a chicken. What do you got? Yeah, yeah, it's what you do after your foot is in the door. Like you yeah. know, I, I mean, yeah. if you can stay in there, that's like then you got something. But yeah, no one gonna... should apologize for having the door ajar. Now right. they're going to start saying, yeah. "Well, you know what? You're too funny for comedy. It's unfair. All the funny people are taking over comedy, and that's yeah. not fair. <laughs> you're not leaving <laughs> any room for the unfunny you're not, people. Yeah, you're not leaving room well, for the unfunny people to be in comedy. The AI can write songs." <laughs> It could write a screenplay. Can the AI be funny? We actually, for the workplace. I asked place, that yesterday. By the we, way, it can. Yeah. I, I was actually literally this morning just screwing around with, with chat. GPT. Uh, GPT. Yeah, yeah. It, that's like incredible. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah. That's the do. next crazy Yeah, but is it funny? Thing. Yeah, yeah I, it actually is. I, actually, I said, I said, I said, write a thank you note for my friend's uh, party yeah. last night. And they, they wrote it out and said, now make it a little bit funny and make it about movies. And it was making this jokes about, well, the the food uh, should probably only deserve a nomination, but certainly not a win. Uh, and I mean, it was just like That's in a, a second. It's amazing. Wow. Yeah. Make fun of a president. And George Bush Sr., what if it came out? Nah, got to do it. Would get an appropriate laugh. Because he was kind of a robot too. Yeah, nah, got to do it. Dana, you need to sue AI. Yeah, no, it sends you <laughs> a royalty check. And you're going to ask, but, but in, in a weird twist, you're going to say, AI, write up a lawsuit against yourself. <laughs> <laughs> well, the weird place is like a, a very loose takeoff on the Twilight Zone. 
where it's anthology Twilight Zone. And we we had one we didn't record where it was the uh, the J one thousand. So it was a robot, an AI robot of Jay Leno, and he's like, <laughs> yeah, okay, let's go out there. I'll do a set. And and his handler, his computer guy, goes, kill him tonight. So he, so oh, he no. actually le- ends up killing the audience. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, and he sta- he actually he stands trial. Yeah, you know, I'm you know, I'm a, you know I. They, he said to kill him, so I did. You know, <laughs> my compassion chip was uh, was uh, defunct. You know, I got to get changed out. You know? I didn't have any empathy, so I just took them all out. You know, so that, that's a programming error. That's a pro. That's- yeah, it was a whole futuristic thing, but that's that's where we're all going. That Good is Lord. hysterical. Good wait, Lord. wait, we, we, you never answered the first, we'll end with this, because the, the, you never answered the first question, which was how do you, how, why are you in Bennett, our, one of our producers' houses? Why are you sitting in his house? I'll give these guys. I think I know why. Can I just say the first part is yes. we tried to have you on the show a while yeah. ago and we had a technical difficulty. Danny was the guest that we had who at the last minute we had to but bail. But you do a podcast. This was, I'd gotten a new laptop and oh. I I have a technical thing I do with, with Fly or we call it the wall. Do you guys ever call it oh. smart? Yeah, we're, we're gonna, we got a smart coming up. That's but anyway, uh, uh, uh. so we went through the torturous <laughs> thing and they the patience of the guy but when, during the whole pandemic. Okay, let's... um. Yo, Rob, you see a red that, dot that's on Rob's the left? Tone. It sh- should Beautiful be blinking. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. um, okay, what do you see? I see a blank screen. Um, all right, okay. let's refresh out of that. Do you see? Let's <laughs> go to settings. You see the wheel for settings. <laughs> it's yeah, been the biggest part of our lives. Uh-huh. Um, and so they did that with me for 45 minutes, and I told them it was like a movie. It was like, ha, 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 we'll get him on. And then it was like, oh, okay, let's, let's, uh, it was like Apollo 13. Let's, uh, let's see what's going on here. We're going to get it. Don't worry. Press that. Do this. I did it around and around and around. The robot said, no, can't do it. And then there was despair and sadness and nervousness toward the end. Yeah. That's why well, we, I said, I'll come over. I, I live near here. I said, I'll just come to his house. No I way. mean, you came over to <laughs> Bennett's house to I do know. this. You are such a love. It was very close by. I could have practically walked. How about that? But you didn't. We'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I should say... You guys have been so so nice to me. That's what Paul said. Thanks for all the compliments, which I think he said to you guys. Because you can't help but gush a little bit with Paul McCartney. Well, that's how we feel about you, man. Uh, honestly, right. uh, Dana, you have been such a hilarious dude for so long. I've been such a massive fan and admirer. Yeah, and I, I feel never like, knew this. I would have felt huge. so good all these years. Uh, I feel like I've huge. bitten <laughs> off your shit so many times. I feel like I've made people laugh because of you. Yep. Uh, and, and I just, uh, honestly, it's such one, an honor to... You guys are you. You're a universe. You're a, you know, the smartless guys has become a meme Mm-hmm. What do the smartless guys do? Where are the smartless guys going? Yeah, well, with you and Spade. By the way, I texted Spade the other day about something, and and uh, and he didn't text me back. He just sent me a voice note back. I'm like, motherfucker, take the time to write it out. That's all he does is the walkie-talkie know, voice, thing. Yeah. Hey, buddy. Yeah, like, <laughs> 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 I, was like, I was like, oh. Because you can't type that, you know. <laughs> no, Spade's, Spade's the great. I'm having fun doing it, but this has been a blast. I, yeah, I know so it's funny. hard. I know what it is to wrap it up and, like, do we go longer? I know where you guys are at right now. No. So I'll well, be the guest. We have to go along goes, with people that aren't any good. You've given up. Well, this might be a two-parter. What, yeah, what are we, we going to do? Yeah, I'll finish with easily. Dennis Miller. Christ sakes. Okay, what are these cats? <laughs> what are they doing? Talking into a microphone. It's called smart. Martin Less. Okay, that's an apt title from what I've heard over here. All right, you got the guy in the middle with the fluffy hair, so thick it looks like a hairpiece. The perennial 10-year-old on the right side of my screen. Baseball caps for everybody, okay? Anybody wear a suit? Okay. Anyway, I get Dennis is. Dana, t- just before we let you go, did you not used to do Dennis to him on Update? Oh Is yeah, that, yeah. That's yeah. my recollection. Like, used to go on and I go him up and have the wig and do it. With the, <laughs> I love so his fun. rhythm. I can't. It's the best. I give me a give me a topic and I'll do Dennis talking about it. any topic. Uh, uh, po- podcasts and there's too many of them. Yeah. Podcast. Okay, what are we up to? 109 million now? Okay. <laughs> Every kid in the basement with a microphone and a cheap laptop can just start yapping out there looking at the 
Looking at those counts, what's he got? Three, 29 people listening to this pablum? All right, okay, what happened to Edward R. Murrow? One guy with talent with a mic. Now you got six million people without a clue, okay? <laughs> haven't seen this much dysfunction since the dysfunctional convention in Utah, all right? It doesn't even have to make sense. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. Well, you're great. Go. You're great, That's Lodge. crazy that you can do that. <laughs> God, thank you so much for coming on and entertaining us. You're such a consistently joy. hilarious, awesome All right. right. Well, right. okay, I'll say this. This is because it'll never happen. We'll all have dinner at Koi with Spade, and we'll, we'll blow people's minds. Let's do Let's it. Do I'm there it. as much as Spade I'll, is. I'll just leave you with this. I okay. use George Bush Sr. for anxiety. I make lists with him, and this is not a joke. Yeah. Coming over here, went to the producer's house. Producer, Bennett, Will... Will, Sean over there, Jason, <laughs> talent, full modicum, every area, game shows, movies, television, sitcoms, American treasures coming at you, talking over, not a subject, long rambles, number one. <laughs> Oh, so good. That is unbelievable. <laughs> calms Man, me. Calms me down. Uh, Calm now. All right. So. I love you, Dana Carvey. Thank you, Dana Carvey. I love you, Dana, you, Dana Carvey. <laughs> I love you, Dana Carvey. <laughs> Bye, Dana. Bye. <sighs> well, that, that could be all time. All, all time. <laughs> could One be all the, time. Yeah. What a hilarious dude. I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and just like this, like this, like this, like what's the subject? Give me a thing. Give me a suggestion. Like in a constant, you know, unbelievable talent. And like, and, and again, yeah. you can't <laughs> fake that. He's back. He keeps leaving the room and coming back. He's in. leaving the room. You can't, you can't, it, you know, it's what we were talking about. You can't no. fake it, right? It's like genuine you can't... and it's, it's just it's pure. Ener I don't think I, I wasn't that energetic when I was 12. I was going to ask yeah. him that. He's got like uh, these sketch comedy people like Marty Short or him or yeah. whoever it is. They have so much energy all the time. Yeah, they have it's big, kind of great engines. Like they yeah. just all, they can run. But you know what I thought was interesting about him was the, the I was going to ask about this, is that when he did all those roles as a kid, you know, as when he was younger and he was an actor first. And yeah. then he was in sketch yeah. comedy. And I bet you that's why he was such a He'd star in sketch, sketch comedy. comedy. He'd never done sketch comedy before. Yeah, I know, but he's he was not. He's one of the. He's one of the all-time great sketch comics. Yeah, incredible. I love him. I love. And him. I love that that idea. Of like, yeah, you want to bring up all this stuff. And he was talking about like with McCartney. Like, can I bring up the Beatles? And can I bring up the songs? I know. I wanted. And to bring with a guy up like him, you're like, can I? I want to bring up Church Lady, and I want yeah. to talk about all the great things. Be like talking to Sean and not bringing up Candy Crush. You know what I mean? Yeah. The <laughs> things you're good at. You're right. Exactly. You're going to known talk for. That you're known for. Yeah. yeah. You're going to bring not, up there's not a lot of Skittles them. and Candy Crush. But I have to believe that a show like the Dana Carvey show would work today because yes. there are stations yeah. that yes. would, you know, you throw it on HBO today or Netflix today. Yeah. And, you know, I... Why not? Or on broadcast. You'd think that broadcast would want something like no, that. No, but they have, as you said, they've tried that variety show thing. Maya Maya had her had her own, right? Uh, I well, think it was the latest with, one. With Marty. With, with, with yeah. Marty, yeah. Um, uh, over yeah. at NBC. Right. It's just, I, I don't know why they don't take, why why SNL is the only one that has sustained is uh, is a tribute to Lauren, uh, certainly. But sure, um, I, I could do with a couple of more. I can't believe he has all this energy uh, at his age after having gone through, which you don't know about, Jason. You didn't know, You didn't remember that he had... What oh, kind of surgery on his heart? It's a what kind of surgery was that? A, a he had... Uh, it was a... It was a bypass! Bye. Wow, Bye. Sean. Bye. Really good. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> that was good. Smart. Smartless is 100% organic and artisanally handcrafted by Bennett Barbaco, Michael Grant Terry, and Rob Armjarf. Smartless. Our next episode will be out in a week wherever you listen to podcasts, or you can listen to it right now early on Amazon Music, or early and ad-free by subscribing to Wondery Plus in Apple Podcasts or the Wondery app.